I'm going to talk in this film um, about the mind and a bit about how the mind works. And I'm going to do a little experiment uh, in the context of that. Uh, so hopefully you'll stick around, that might be interesting. Uh, anyway, before I start that, just to say my name's Emily. I'm a Buddhist, a Tibetan Buddhist. I've been practicing since 2013 daily practice, principally of the mantra Om Tare to Tare to Re Soha, Tibetan Buddhist mantra of uh, Green Tara, mother of the Buddhas. And uh, I became a Buddhist early in 2020. So that's a bit of background about me. I'm not a teacher. I'm just here to share my thoughts and impressions about this kind of stuff. Now, in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, um, it opens by saying, or the translation I've got, opens by saying that um, yoga is the restraint of the modifications of mind stuff. So we've got three things there. We've got restraint and we've got modifications and we've got mind stuff. So mind stuff is the, the medium in which thoughts occur, in which thoughts arise. And, um, you know, that's what we're all swimming in 24 hours a day, even when we're asleep. Um, it's all mind stuff. It's, that's the medium of thoughts. And these modifications of mind stuff are, yeah, it's called chitta. It's called mind stuff, chitta. Uh, the modifications of mind stuff are called vritti. They are the vrittis. And they are surprisingly limited in number and nature. There's sleep, memory, accurate stuff, inaccurate stuff, and made up stuff. That's it. So when we're awake, there are only four memory, accurate, inaccurate, and made up. That's it. And of course, these, um, these vrittis kind of flow in and out of each other. For example, you can have a memory, which then kind of evolves into some made up stuff or a memory that is then underpinned or imbued with accurate stuff or inaccurate stuff. And um, it is quite tricky sometimes to uh, recognize the difference between inaccurate stuff and made up stuff. But I think uh, when we, if we really, really analyze what's going on in our minds, we'll find out that the, uh, the majority of it is made up stuff. <laughs> So to illustrate all that, I'm going to do an experiment now. I'm going to close the camera. It's going to make it more interesting. I'm going to switch off the camera for a minute and then I'm going to do something. I'm going to um, manifest a particular phenomenon and then we're going to analyse what might be happening with the, the four waking vrittis around, just some possible ways that uh, the vrittis might um, arise around this phenomenon that I'm going to enact. So I'm going to turn the camera off now, just for a sec. And there we go. Okay, camera's off now. Here we go. Okay, so I enacted a phenomenon. So memory, is there a memory that you have around that phenomenon that I just enacted? Maybe it reminds you of something, maybe there's something you've heard before that was similar. 
Um, maybe you um, recognize the, uh, the object that was interacted with while the camera was off. Uh, you might be right, you might be wrong. Uh, your uh, thoughts about what it is might be accurate, they might be inaccurate. Um, just for the sake of, hey, it was the hat. Okay, but you might have had an accurate or an inaccurate idea about the size of this, uh, for example. Um, yeah, you might, as I say, have a memory of it. You might have um, been to a sound bath or, or just heard stuff like that before and it triggered the memory of it. Um, it triggered the memory of when you've heard that before. There might be some made up stuff. You might have been wondering whether I was actually making that sound or not. I mean, I wasn't. I can't make that sound. But when I take this object and this object and make them interact by act of will with my body, that's how the sound is produced. But, you know, you might have been telling yourself that it was pre-recorded. Uh, for all you know, when the camera was off, I could have been making rude gestures or something. Or picking my nose or something like this. You just don't know. You just don't know. So it's like masses and masses of potential for made up stuff. But all that is just to illustrate that um, the actual workings of our minds are really, really simple. It's just those four things. Memory, accurate perception, inaccurate perception, and made up stuff. That's it. That's all that is going on in our minds all the time when we're awake. And as I say, those things sort of uh, feed into each other. For example, you know, when you heard that sound, when you heard the sound of the bowl, um, the memory that if you had a memory about it, it might have triggered off that memory. And then perhaps some of that memory was accurate. Some of that memory was inaccurate. Perhaps you went off down a made up stuff road about what could have happened if you had done something or another, or if somebody else had done something or another in that setting where you heard that sound before. So then memory is then feeding into made up stuff. Um, accurate stuff and inaccurate stuff um, can kick off the uh, potential for more made up stuff about what might happen if blah, 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 blah. And it might be fear based, it might be hope based, it might be joy based, it might be misery based, who knows? Um, so. Really, what I was doing, I this isn't too bonkers, was just trying to, I'm just trying to, in a sense, reassure us all about the content of our own minds. That's all there is. Memory, accurate perception, inaccurate perception, and made up stuff. And of course, it's the made up stuff when we act upon the made up stuff that's when the most complex uh, karmic um, effects arise for us and um, it is possible to um, spend extended and i would say inordinate amounts of time and energy on um, made up stuff uh, it is I think the vast majority of what actually goes on in our waking minds and it can uh, attach itself to either to any of the other three vrittis the memory the accurate perception and the inaccurate perception so you know if you are um, willing and able to develop a daily silent sitting practice a daily silent meditation practice and um, begin to actually observe the nature of your own thoughts, the content of your own thoughts, and observe those thoughts without judgment and without um, kind of deciding whether you think they're good or bad. Just look at them for what they are. You will see that that's all there is actually going on in our minds, um, which personally I find hugely reassuring. Because it can seem, especially in the context 
of being caught up in a whole heap of um, made up stuff. Um, like, like there's all sorts of sort of complicated stuff going on in there. And of course, also um, the memory, accurate perception, inaccurate perception and made up stuff can then trigger off the physical reactions of emotions as well and feelings. Um, so which then tumble into more vrittis, more memories. You know, you remember when you felt that way, you remember the last time you felt that way or some other time you felt that way. Um, the feelings around accurate perception, feelings around inaccurate perception of whatever it is you're perceiving. And um, I think especially, again, you know, really intense emotional stuff around made up stuff. What ifs, coulda, woulda, shoulda, all of this, um, usually either based in fear or excitement, um, aversion or craving. <laughs> um, so if we can just begin to observe those things for what they are, as I say, without judging them, um, it can be incredibly useful in bringing a, se a sense of perspective to our own perception, accurate, inaccurate, all made up <laughs> of what's going on in our own noddles and in our body in terms of um, feelings and emotions. And with practice, one can develop uh, the capacity to just go, oh yes, that's fear. That fear was based on that made up thing. And that made up thing was triggered by that memory. And then you can dispense with it. You can dispense with it and not buy into it and invest in it and then go and take some sort of action based on it because it was something made up uh, it was a feeling that was attached to something that your mind had made up and um that was perhaps you know in that case triggered by a memory of something that might or might not be um to some degree or other accurate or inaccurate but the point of this is to show that uh, with um, a sustained daily practice, identifying, just discerning what is happening in our own mind um, is immensely useful. And as I say, not buying into it, letting it pass and just returning to the breath and to stillness. And uh, the longer you do that in a daily way, you know, and you only need about 20 minutes a day, um, you know, even if that, just start with two minutes and build it up slowly. Do it daily. That whole process gets quicker, more effective, and uh, everything then calms down, you calm down, and your life gets better. And the life of everyone around you gets better. So I'm just going to make the little noise again. Because it's nice. You might expect that of a Buddhist, hey, I've been rather disappointed if I hadn't done it again. Right, I'm going to leave that there. I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you would like to support the work I do on this channel, there are links in the description box for that. And yeah, memory, accurate perception, inaccurate perception, made up shit. That's all that's going on in there. Thank you for watching.